project coming up that I'm very excited about. Uh, it's launching this month. I couldn't get it launched, unfortunately, in time for CanCon. That's my own fault. Um, but it's called, uh, it's, it's a series of novellas. So five novellas that are coming out together and then in one book as a print edition, but they're starting as e-editions. It's called Nye. The tagline on it, this isn't the final cover, I do have it here, I just got it like two days ago, I can show it to you, it's super awesome. The, uh, the tagline is, once upon a time there were no more happy endings. Now some of you might know that I'm also a performing storyteller. Uh, basically what I do is I go around and I tell stories. I, I've told across Canada, I've told in the United States, I tell in bars and theater houses, I tell under disco lights. Uh, wherever people tell me, here, come tell a story, we'll give you a penny, we'll give you some food, a drink, I am there. Um, and so one of the things that I know very well uh, are fairy tales. And not new fairy tales, not, not the adapted fairy tales, even beyond Grimm's, where we're talking about you know, the original fairy tales, the fairy stories, the myths, the things that kept people in their houses at night, the things that kept them out of the forest when it was too dangerous to go out, those stories from the old days. So what I've done with this new novella series is I've taken uh, a bunch of my family legend and lore, I've taken these old fairy tales, mm -hmm. and I've taken some of uh, one of my best friends, family lore as well, and I've mashed it all together into this series which is basically about what happens when the veil between our world and the fairy world collapses. It's dark. And it's dark because the old stories are dark. And I'm going to tell you one now. Um, and this is the story, it's an old ballad, very old ballad, it's called Barbara Allen, for those of you who know it. There's been a lot of adaptation, there was an anthology called The Song, uh, oh, Book of Ballads, Book of Ballads, uh, Charles Weiss, um, Charles Vess had a big hand in it, he illustrated all of these stories, and, and this is partly based on that version, it's partly based on the original ballad, which I will not sing to you, because um, my throat is like ruined after two days at a con already, so I will not put you through that but I will tell you the story of Barbara Allen. Once, when I was walking home one night and, and the day was beautiful but had been long, and I crossed through the forest on my way back home and there crossing through a meadow, the shadows seemed longer and the air seemed crisper and there I saw near a tree standing still in the dark of the shadows, sweet William. He stared at me with dark eyes and beckoned me to come to him. Before I even realized it, I was walking towards him, my feet moving with the will of their own. Oh, sweet William, his eyes smoldering, calling to me. He held out his hand, keeping it in the shadows, and without even thought of anything but to touch him, I reached out and put my hand in his. It was cold, but it made me warm. He pulled me down to the ground with the grass prickling through my clothes, and then the mists fell around us, and a quiet unlike anything I had ever felt. No sound broke through the mist. The light shifted and changed and darkness encroached on us and I grew frightened and I cried out for my mother but no one could hear me. I managed to scramble and break away from sweet William's embrace. And then as I walked away I heard him call, Oh Barbara Allen, won't you come be mine Barbara Allen? But I was terrified, and I walked through the mist and hurried home, and I arrived home and closed the door behind me, and I went up to my room, and I tried to sleep. Oh, how I tried to sleep. But I could feel him still, sweet William. I could taste him still, sweet William. And I could hear him calling for me still, sweet William.
And so the next day, when the sun was high, without even thinking about it, I found myself once more in that meadow. And once again, sweet William stood in the darkness of that trio. Oh, and he looked at me with those eyes. And he held out his hand to me. Come to me, Barbara Allen. Won't you be mine, Barbara Allen? And before I could think about it, craving to feel that hand in mine, to feel his lips on mine, to feel his fingers all over me, I walked toward him. But before, before my fingers pierced that shadow, before I touched those fingers of his, I managed to pull back and I took one step back, away, away, but from what safety? For there still was sweet William with his eyes, oh, with his eyes beckoning me. Come, Barbara Allen, won't you be mine, Barbara Allen? I put my fingers in my palm. I curled them so strong that I felt the nails cutting me. It kept me grounded in the light, but away from sweet William. Oh, sweet William, I wish for nothing more than to be with you. But, but what are you, sweet William? You frighten me even as I long for you. And he smiled, but in his smile was such a darkness as I had never before seen. His eyes were bright and dark at once. His voice was like the cry of a dark river at night as he spoke. Oh, Barbara Allen, I was like you once until I fell asleep in this very meadow. It was sun when I slept, but the shadows found me and so did the fairy queen. Oh, and she captured my soul. And my soul is with her still, and I will never have it again, never know it again. And he held out his hand and looked at me. Now come to me, Barbara Allen. Won't you be mine, Barbara Allen? And I curled my fingers even further. I cut every single nail into my skin. I felt the warm blood pooling between them. No, sweet William, you must tell me first. There must be a way to regain your soul. Won't you tell me, sweet William? <sighs> but there is a way, Barbara Allen. If one resists me, my soul will be mine. But no one has ever resisted me. Now come to me, Barbara Allen. And with all of the strength that I didn't even know I possessed, I shook my head. I shook my head, my hair falling side to side until it shook sense into me. And I managed to take a step back and another. But I looked at him in my foolishness. I looked at him and his hand was still outstretched towards me and his eyes were still beckoning. But I managed to break away. I turned and I ran, not just hurried back home. And I closed the door behind me, slamming it, and ran upstairs. I ran upstairs to my room, and there I locked myself in, and I cried on the floor, wanting nothing more but to feel those lips, to feel those hands, to feel those fingers on me once more. I did not sleep well that night. Oh, I did not sleep at all, haunted by visions of sweet William. But then, then seeing his yearning for his soul to be free, I stayed my ground and I stayed in my room. The next morning, someone came knocking as the sun rose. They asked for me. And I went down, and a man told me, 
Sweet William is dying, Barbara Allen, and he asks for you, Barbara Allen. I followed this man I did not know, in a town I knew so well, to a house I had never before seen. And there they brought me to the second floor, where, in the middle of it, in a great sprawling bed, lay sweet William. His face had sunken in. His skin was pale the color of snow. Blood ran and pooled around him down into the floor. And there it stained it. When I entered the room, I paused and I looked at him. Then he opened his eyes. Oh, and his eyes had lost none of their power. They were dark and smoldering. He saw me there and he held up his arm weakly. Do you see the blood on my bed, Barbara Allen? I have wept this blood for you, Barbara Allen. Only you can save me. Will you not be mine now? Barbara Allen. And before I knew what I was doing, I had taken a step toward him and another. And I saw the grief in his eyes as I did so, and I curled my fingers in my palm again and cut myself back, reopening the wounds, and felt my own blood warming my fingers and forcing me back to my senses. And I turned around and I walked away and I heard all of his friends say, oh, hard-hearted Barbara Allen. And I went back home and I locked myself in my room and I waited and I waited. Every one of my breaths counted as though everyone waited for something so strong, something so powerful. I did not even know it until I heard it. The slow striking of the church bells brought me out of my own counting of my breaths. Slow, wailful, grieving. The church bells announcing the passing of a soul. I felt numb. I wrapped a shawl around my shoulders as black as I had and I walked out to the road, and there I saw all of his friends, all of Sweet William's friends, carrying a casket made of simple wood. I stood before them in the road. I ask that you lower the casket, and that you let me glance upon the face of my Sweet William. And they did so without protest. They put it down, and they lifted it, and I gazed on him, and I saw sweet William. Sweet William was gone, but on his lips, as a final message to me, was a smile I had not seen in life. Sweet William was gone. Sweet William had died. Sweet William had been resisted. And sweet William had found his soul again. And I threw back my head and I laughed in madness and joy for he had found his soul. But I, I had lost mine in him. And all of his friends heard me laugh. And they said hard hearted Barbara Allen. And I ran home and I closed the door behind me and I called out to my mother, Mother, make my bed long and narrow. William died of me today and I will die of him tomorrow. The next day, they buried Barbara Allen by sweet William. From her grave grew a rose and from his a briar and they intertwined and they intertwine still and they always will onto eternity the end From the sky and heaven.